I mean, I got into it for the art until I realized how much money I could make. I'm like, wow, <laughs> right? So be focused, understand your colors, look at all your shades. So the next thing I wanted to do is if we can create the shades that I need to control the warmth, then how about also create shades that are going to give a shine and condition? Because again, I said it was the number one thing was the client. So J. Beverly Hills, our color, we have used at botanicals. And we have four different botanicals. In every tube of color, it's botanically infused. Acai berry, number one antioxidant in the world. Blueberries, pomegranates. What is an antioxidant? They fight free radicals in the hair. Frizzy, flyaways, okay? So we put acai berry in our color. The next we put was argan oil. Argan oil comes from a bean in Morocco. Very high in proteins. Color adheres or sticks to proteins in the hair when it bonds in the hair. So I want to put protein into it. Even Moroccan oil teaches you can put it into color and you can. But don't put it into our color because every level and every tube is totally different. Every shade has a different amount of argan oil in it. It's the right amount for that level and those pigments in that tube. Does that make sense? Yeah. So don't add anything to it because you'll repel your deposit. We also put aloe vera in our color. Aloe vera is what you put on a burn. It soothes. It gives you shine. It gives you condition. And then we put black pearl powder. Black pearl powder is actually like if you open a shell that the pearls are in. It's not smashed black pearls given to me, baby. Um, it's that gross stuff that's around the pearl that protects it. That stuff, like seaweed, is very high in amino acids, omegas, vitamin B12, vitamin B6. So that's what we put into our color, those four botanicals. And they actually rebuild the hair structure. Nothing's more rewarding to me when I'm out teaching around the world and I'm doing a model. The best way I can show off my color is to do a really vibrant red or a really vibrant violet or something like that that's going to really show it off if I'm doing a show. And then find a porous blonde and put a glaze on her hair and close the cuticle and make it smooth and shiny. And a porous blonde is really easy to find. <laughs> Everyone in the audience has it. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, right? And it rebuilds the structure of the hair. So we have the botanicals in there. The next was talking about alkalinity. So one thing is understanding how hair color works, first of all. Permanent hair color. Permanent hair color is an oxidative tint, right? When it comes out of the tube, God forbid it's a bottle, old hair color, but whatever it comes out of, it's going to be white or clear, right? And then you add your developer to it, which is hydrogen peroxide, right? And it starts to oxidize. And then the bowl, after a few minutes, starts to turn a shade, right? And when it's on the hair, it starts to oxidize as well. So oxidative tint will always be white when it comes out of a tube. Right? Now, a hair strand, let me see if this one works, like this, is very similar to like a, a snake skin or scales on a fish. It's called the cuticle layer. I'm sure you've learned that, right? I hope. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so, for permanent hair color to work, it has to be alkaline. Have you learned the pH scale? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Good. We have acid, we have alkaline. What's neutral? Seven. Perfect. What's hair? Uh, Four point five to five. Awesome. Okay. So, for hair color to work, we, we have to have an alkaline agent that's going to lift the cuticle, right? It's like a door. It's going to open the door so the color pigments can go inside the hair, right? And then, to me, it's like a nightclub. I always tell everybody it's a nightclub theory. This is a club, and Alkalinity is called the doorman, right? <laughs> so Mr. Alkaline is going to open the door and let you into the club. Once you get in the club, your number one agenda is to hook up, okay? So once we get in the club, we want to hook up, and there's other pigments in the club, and we're a pigment, <laughs> right? And we start to do our little thing, and like, hey, you want to have a shot? Right? <laughs> we're bonding, and that's what they do with the hair. They start to bond. Now, the worst thing that happened is the fire alarm go off and just water because we're out of the club, right? What we want to do is get stuck in the club, okay? So you want to bond completely. So the number one thing about the bonding time is the processing time. Never take color off early. You have to go the full amount because it's that last five minutes 
in processing. It might do all its lifting ability. They might start to mingle and have their shot. You gotta get stuck, okay? So the last five minutes is when they're like, hey, I like it. <laughs> right? And they stick together and they bond. Never take off color early. The number one reason hair color fades is because you shampooed it too early. I mean, there's lots of factors why it'll fade. Water, salt water, cheap shampoo, many reasons that cause color to fade, but the number one is it didn't bond in the hair structure to begin with. And I, I know what it's like on a Saturday. I watch my salon, and your client came in 20 minutes late. She couldn't find parking. She's got two kids with her. She's scattered when she comes in. And you're like, oh, God. Right? And she, by the time you finally get her cape around her neck, and you start to mix the color, now you're 30 minutes behind, right? And sure enough, the next client is 30 minutes early. And she's the one that's doing like this. I gotta get out of here. Right? Welcome to the world of the Saturday Salon. So you get her color on, and then you gotta get the one that's like in a hurry, and get her started, right? And she looks like she's ready, and you're like, hey, can you do me a favor and shampoo her for me? I'll, I'll help you out. And her color went off five minutes early. But it looked like it was oxidized. It looked dark enough, but timers? What are those? <laughs> and then that client calls two weeks later and says, my hair looking brassy. It's, I don't know what's wrong. It's orange. I don't like it. And the hairdresser always says, what shampoo did you use? <laughs> I'm always looking for something different. It wasn't me. What shampoo did you use? What did you put on your hair? And the best one is when she says, the one you sold me. <laughs> That's when I love it. I'm like, okay, now what are you going to say? <laughs> I watch it happen in my salon all day. And I'm like, okay, come up with another one now. <laughs> that wasn't on the hair long enough to oxidize, to process. It's the most important thing of your processing time. Don't ever take it. And our color is not progressive. When we talk about progress progressive colors, there are colors that will get darker and darker and darker. Like back in the day when I started doing hair, color was really weird. And we'd have a level seven color, but it was uh, it was progressive. So I get the phone call with the lady who's like wanting to tell me her life story. I'm like, God, I think I gotta go. And I'm looking at the hair over there getting darker and darker and darker. By the time I got off the phone, she was a level two. And I'm like, oh God, this isn't gonna happen with our color. It's the level it's going to be. So even if I paint it on your hair and I go home and like tomorrow I shampoo it out, it will still be that level. It'll never get dark and it just quits. So like when I'm doing different trends that we release, I might color eight doll heads one day, different techniques on them. I go home and I rinse them all out the next day. It's not going to get any darker, it's just going to quit. Wow. So make sure you leave it on long enough to bond. Does that make sense? Yes. So, let's talk about, we talked about it that a, a tube of color has to be alkaline to open the cuticle, right? Mm -hmm. For it to get in there and do its job. There's three main ingredients in any, any manufacturer's tube. I don't care what brand it is. In a tube of color, there are three main ingredients. It's going to be your alkaline agent, Mr. Norman. It's going to be some type of protein in there. Paul Mitchell uses a beeswax protein. I told you what we use. We have four different botanicals. Right? And then there's pigment. You have to have the pigment in there. That's the color. And then just like the good old planet Earth in your body, 70% of what's in any manufacturer's tube is water. Okay? And so now we know these three ingredients. Now think about technology. The amount of alkalinity that they use. See, color 20 years ago opened the cuticle layer maybe like 10 degrees. I, I'm sorry, 25 degrees or 30 degrees, right? Because it was higher in ammonia. The molecules were bigger. So we had to really open up that cuticle to get the molecule in there. But nowadays, technology's changed. Like the molecule we use with J. Beverly Hills is a pharmaceutical grade, micromolecule that is so small, we don't even need to open up the cuticle layer 10 degrees, just barely, and we can get in there. Now you want to talk about box color at the supermarket. It blows the cuticle clear open to here. Because <laughs> it's 9% ammonia. Do you know through the TV they can tell you it's ammonia free on TV? As long as it's less than 10% ammonia through the FDA. Oh, wow. So it can have 9.999% ammonia, but it's ammonia free. <laughs> right, and it's organic. 
If it was organic, you'd have to refrigerate it. <laughs> what? It's called BS marketing. Okay? It is. But they never tell you the truth. And look at the hair. 9% ammonia, it looks like a frizzy, dry broom. It's opaque, it's matte, it looks like a tire, and it feels, I could clean my pans with it. It's so porous, the cuticle, it's like, like, like sandpaper. It's rough. Look at the hair, go to the county fair, honey. Right? They're all there! Fried hair! Go to the airport, go to the mall. I'm like, oh my God, look at all the hair out there. It's fuzz. It's box color. It's destroying their hair. It's blowing the cuticle out. Bleach. It opens the cuticle way out there. That's why you can't even get a comb through it right after you shampoo, right? The cuticle's wide open. Color. In salons, the most harsh that I can even think of doesn't even have more than 6% ammonia. And I won't tell you which brand that is, but it's all natural. <laughs> Cracks me up. But most of them have anywhere between 2 to 4% ammonia content. So they can have three times the amount of ammonia that we use it behind the chair and sell it on TV and say it's completely ammonia free. And then you have all these companies out there where we don't even use ammonia. So smell me. Okay. Ours is ammonia free. Have you ever heard that in a color line? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we're ammonia free. Where'd they leave the part out is what they replaced it with. Yeah. They don't tell you that. We're ammonia free, but we use this instead of ammonia. Where's that part? They don't talk about that part, do they? No. And the stuff they're replacing ammonia with is far more hazardous than ammonia. <laughs> It's ammonia free, it's just called yeah, toxin. <laughs> Where is that part in the commercial? The human body produces ammonia. You ever been to an outhouse at the county fair? <laughs> that plastic one you have to go in and your eyes burn? That's called human ammonia. <laughs> okay? Yeah. The human body produces ammonia. After Super Bowl Sunday, probably a lot of you have it in today. Okay? So ammonia, understand it. The human body produces, I'm going to use ammonia, it's a natural agent. I'm not going to use an additive. One of the best ways I can explain this, think about a permanent wave, okay? There's two solutions to a permanent wave, correct? The first one's called a processing solution, and that one stinks, right? And it goes in and it breaks the bonds down, right? And once they're unattached, then we rinse the processing solution out of the hair thoroughly and we put on the neutralizer. The neutralizer, is how, the neutralizer doesn't stink. It actually smells kind of good. Some of them smell like a cocktail, right? Like they, they smell okay. But if you leave that neutralizer on more than five minutes and you leave it on 20 minutes, what's it going to do to the hair? It's going to overprocess the hair and you're going to have to destroy their hair. In fact, of the two solutions, the neutralizer is the most damaging. That acidic neutralizer, but it smells like you can drink it. Okay, so my point is, just because something doesn't stink or it smells good, doesn't mean it's healthy for you or the hair. Used to replace ammonia in hair color lines is MEA, monoethanolamine. And I'm not going to put it in my hair color. Because it's far more hazardous. Just because it doesn't have any smell doesn't mean it's not hazardous. Monoethanolamine, first of all, is tested on animals till they die. And I'm an animal free. So that's out of the question. The next thing it is, is it causes brain cancer, lung cancer, respiratory problems. Google it, MEA. And the reason they put it in hair color is because it has no fragrance. It's not who you're putting it on that it's damaging. It's for you! You're standing above it, breathing it all day long. I'm not going to put it in my hair color. I'm going to put ammonia in there. And because we have a pharmaceutical grade micromolecule and I only have to open the cuticle layer 10 degrees, I have the lowest ammonia content of any color in the world. We don't even have 1% ammonia in a tube. And we can go inside the hair and color the hair. And because we don't even have 1% ammonia and we're barely opening the cuticle 10 degrees, we can close it back down too when we're done coloring the hair and it's smooth. 
and it's shiny and it's soft and feels like silk. It actually rebuilds the hair structure. And I think that's a key difference in hair color. We can get the tone, and many color lines out there can get the same tonal value as our hair color. But is it going to have the shine? Is it going to have the condition? Is it going to have the integrity to the hair? And that's the winner that's going to bring the client back to your chair. The shine, the condition, and the integrity. Does that make sense? Yes. You guys kind of understand now how color works? Yes. A little bit more? So, with our color line, we actually take it a little bit further. Because when I was taught color, you just mix it with it. It's going to work because it has all the ammonia, it has all the components that you need, or whatever's in there to make it work. But now, with Jay Beverly Hills Hair Color, I teach people to think about porosity. Once you understand pH, alkaline and acid, and you understand porosity and texture of hair, because every, every hair is going to absorb color differently based on the porosity. And other color lines, it didn't matter because it was high in ammonia and it's just going to cover it. But I'm going to teach you guys how to do good hair. Think about it. If I have uh, two clients here that have never colored their hair, one of them right here is Korean and she has stick straight hair and one of them here has natural level six curly hair. Which one's going to suck up and absorb the color easier? Curly hair. Curly. Absolutely. Which one's going to be harder to cover? Korean. The Korean stick straight hair, right? So it's porosity. Have you ever noticed most color lines, okay, when they're going the same level or darker, they use 10 volume, correct? Yes. But if they're going the same level or darker and they have to cover gray, what do they tell you to do? Wait. You have to use 20 volume now. Because 10 won't cover gray, right? Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Is that yes. what you've learned before? Yes. So if I'm going darker and they have no gray, like her hair, if I just want to make her darker, 10 volume will work, right? Mm -hmm. But if she was 50% gray and I wanted to go darker, wouldn't I use 20 volume? Yes. Isn't that what color companies teach you? Yeah. Okay. Now, I may teach you even one step further. The hair doesn't have to be gray to use a higher developer. Look at the porosity of the hair. That stick straight Korean hair, I might need the 20 volume for her because the texture is like gray hair. It's a very tight cuticle. Gray is harder to cover because the cuticle layer is so strong on it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But the hair doesn't have to be gray to use a higher developer. Does that make sense too? Yes. Look at what you're painting on, especially when you're working with smart hair color that's really gentle. It's like a smart TV. You have to know how to work them now. They're different. This is smart hair color. But you have to kind of be a smart hairdresser. And look at what you're painting on. Look at the texture. Now, one unique thing about J. Beverly Hills color is because we don't even open the cuticle that much to get in there. We also use lower volumes of peroxide. We use five volume for level on level and going darker. And if it's resistant or gray hair, then we use 10 volume going level on level or going darker. So on the Korean, I would use a 10 volume going darker, or the gray haired person, I'd use a 10 volume going darker, or the curly haired, I would use a 5 volume going darker, or the blonde, I would use a 5 going darker. Does that make sense? Yes. We make a 5 volume, and it's our level on level or going darker. We make a 10 volume, it's like everybody else's 20. It gives you one level of lift, or it covers tight cuticle, going darker or gray. We use 20 volume for only one thing. When we go two levels lighter, that's it. It'll still cover gray when we're going two levels lighter. It's the only time we use 20. We use 30 for three levels lighter. It'll still cover gray too. And 40 for four levels lighter. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, I'm sure your instructors here have also told you before in the past Please close the lids on your developers. Have you ever heard that? Yes. Do you know why? So the oxygen doesn't get in the Oxygen. Oxygen escapes, right? Well, okay, what is this right here? A bladder. We can drink it, right? What's that? Oxygen. So we have, we have two parts hydrogen and two parts oxygen, right? We've created a liquid gas 
called H2O2, which is hydrogen peroxide. Right? Yeah. Hydrogen peroxide is acidic. You can brush your teeth with it, bleach your teeth, pour it on an open wound. Right? It's not damaging. And so many people think peroxide is damaging to the hair. It's not damaging. It's what you mix it with that causes damage. You mix that stuff with something really high in alkalinity, you could even see hair smoke. Like back in the day when I started doing hair, we had 120, 130 volume. And they would put the cap on the hair, pull it through, mix 130 volume and bleach it. It was white in like 30 seconds. They called it frosting. You get my hair frosted. It's more like fried. Okay? That's how they did hair 35 years ago. <laughs> Crazy stuff. Technology's really changed. Okay. Hydrogen peroxide. Now, what's the difference between 10 volume and 40 volume? Who can tell me? What's the difference? The amount of oxygen. Okay. So, if I in Europe they go per, by percentages, and a lot of the places that I teach around the world they go by we go 10 volume, 20 volume. They go 3 percent, 9 percent, 3 percent, right? They go by percentages. Yeah, 9%. What is that? 30 volume. Oh, 30. But I'm going to tell you what the percent means so you guys understand. 3% is 10 volume. 6% is 20. 9% is 30. And 12% is 40. And 1.5% is 5 volume. Okay. Now, here's what it means. What they talk about in Europe, the reason they call it by percentages, if I have a bottle of peroxide right here, like this, if it's 10 volume, right, that means 3%. That means inside of this bottle, out of 100 parts, 3% of it, 3 parts, is hydrogen peroxide, and 97% of it is water. It's buffered water. It's not like water out of the tap. So if you've got 40 volume, which is 12%, 12% of this is hydrogen peroxide, and 88% of it's water. So when you leave the lid open, what happens to the oxygen? It evaporates, right? And once the oxygen is gone, you have a bottle of water. Ten volume, three percent will turn to water in an hour if the lid's off. It ain't ever going to work again. Overnight, <coughs> 40 volume is water. Imagine five volume, 1.5%. Sure doesn't take long to turn to water, and every time I go to a salon, even salons that use our color and that I've educated for, I walk in their back color lab when they're doing hair and all the bottles are open. I'm like, wow. I'm constantly closing lids. Do you understand why now? It can turn to water so quickly. So keep your lids closed on your hydrogen peroxide. I don't care what brand it is. It works for you. And you get the results you want to see. So we use lower volumes because we have a smaller molecule. We don't open the hair strand that much so we can get in there and form a polypeptide chain and bond in the hair. Then we can close the cuticle. So permanent color that we've been talking about is exactly this. It's oxidative tint. It goes inside the hair and you need an alkaline agent to open the cuticle. Now, what about semi-permanent hair color or demi-permanent hair color? What's the difference between that color and permanent color? It's acidic in pH. So it can't lift, it can't open cuticle, it can only deposit color. And that's what semis and demis do. Like Holdwell. I'll use them because I talked to them in the 80s, so I know their line. But they have top chic, which is their color, their permanent color in the cans or in the tubes, right? And it's alkaline. And then they have colorants. Colorants comes in cans or tubes, but it even says acid hair color on the tubes because it deposits only. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, a lot of brands out there have their permanent color and their acidic color, their deposit. Wella, they make color stone perfect and they make Color Touch. L'Oreal, they make Majorelle, and they make, oh my God, 14 other ones. And Schwarzkopf, they make Igor Royale, and they make Vivians. 
Um, do, you, do you get what I'm saying? Yes. So for me, when I talk for Gold Law, one of the most frustrating things <laughs> is I might choose the perfect color to put on her roots, the top chic, right? And then from the line of demarcation through the ends, I want to deposit color. So I want to use acidic color, and I go use the colorons. But they don't make the same shade. Almost every brand I know in the world, the shades in their demis or semis aren't the same shades as their permanent color. So you can put whatever you want on the roots, and you're like, oh my god, how am I going to make match what's on the ends because they don't make the exact same shades. How frustrating for a hair artist. So we're mixing and matching, trying to get the shade that we want to get. I will take a break like in five minutes anyway. Okay. Yeah, because I'll talk for about hair. It'll be tomorrow morning, and you'll be like, okay, shut up. <laughs> I get really excited. I'm sorry, I like hair. <laughs> so, um, for me, once I understood pH, why can't we make a tube that you can alter the pH of the tube? And make that tube semi, demi, or permanent all out of one tube. Wow. All I have to do is alter the, the, the pH balance of the tube, right? And turn it from an alkaline state into an acidic state. If I could do that, then you don't have to buy two tubes of 5R permanent and 5R demi-permanent. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what we did with J. Beverly Hills. Every tube in here is semi, demi, permanent, all based on developers. We created an amazing developer called 2Transform. 2-transform isn't a peroxide, but once you mix 2-transform to any tube in our swatch book, that instantly when it hits the tube, it starts to lower the pH. So you stir it up in the bowl and you let it sit for five minutes. And within five minutes, it lowers the pH below seven. Once it's below seven and once it's below neutral, it cannot lift the cuticle, it cannot go in the cortex, it can only lay on top of and deposit and give you shining condition. And it'll be the same tone. So now I can use the same tube with my permanent on the root, grab that same tube, mix it with two transform, let it become acidic, and put that on the line of demarcation through the ends and deposit, give me my hair shine, silky, conditioned hair. It's awesome, all out of one tube. So now we reduce your inventory in half because you don't have to buy permanent, demi-permanent, semi-permanent, or whatever you call them. You can get it all out of one tube. And I think that's amazing technology. Let's take a break, and then after the break, we'll go into a little bit more about hair.